Hi. All right, so we're going to start talking about a job system. Um, but to do that, we need to kind of talk about systems in general. So we're going to talk a little bit about some various aspects of doing cost accounting. And then we'll talk specifically about job order costing, all right? So first thing we're going to talk about is just differentiate between cost accounting systems. Because we ha we've been really talking about cost behaviors. We've been talking about activity-based costing. And uh, so now we're going to talk about actual specific kinds of costing systems and how we, how we do the cost accounting. All right, then we're going to talk about um, source documents used in job order costing and um, cost flows. We're going to talk about the journal entries, yes, um, for you financial accounting fans who like journals and T accounts, we are going to do some of that. It's, I think it's, this is a really great chapter to help you understand how the... Um, the costing that we do eventually flows into cost of goods sold, right? So um, there's accounting goes on in cost accounting. And we'll look at job order costing uh, through an activity-based costing lens. So we'll look at some um, plant-wide rates and we'll look at activity-based rates. And we'll just talk a bit about spoiled units. You know, you gotta, you got to include them somewhere. All right. Now, I think you probably get this. You can have manufacturing firms where you're producing a product and you got to cost out a specific product. Or you might have a service firm like, say, a bank or an accounting firm, and you are going to be really costing out services, medical profession, something like that. So, you know, I think you get the idea between those. So, here's a kind of a new concept. I don't think we've really talked about this. Unique versus standardized products and services. So when it comes to costing, um, we have to differentiate between, in order to set up our cost system, we have to say, okay, well, is this a unique product or a unique job? Uh, or is this something that's very standard? So pencils are very standard. So we can come along and crank out millions and millions of these and set up our cost system to just buy the unit, you know, how much is a pencil? But let's suppose that we um, were made picture frames and people would come in with their diplomas and their paintings and their pictures and their prints and they're all different sizes and they want all different colored frames and some want mats and some want different size mats and some want two mats of different colors and some uh, want glass and some don't want glass and some want a shadow box. So. You can, you know, every single product you create at that frame shop is going to be different, right? So those are what we call a job, right? And they would be a unique product. Um, so something that's unique, you use job order costing. So basically you're keeping track of that job. Something that's not unique, right, pencils, you use process costing because you know they're all the same you're gonna make a bunch of them it's just a process it's and there's nothing unique about it you don't have to keep track of every pencil you just keep track of pencils in general <laughs> and you uh, get your per unit cost and then you just know that's what they cost um, but for a job you have to track that specific job you know, maybe like you're a home builder something like that okay so that's something to keep in mind as we're doing. So what happens? Well, we record costs using accounting, right? We record our, our uh, costs as they come along and we measure them and classify them as direct material, direct labor and overhead. Um, and maybe not overhead, maybe some selling and admin expenses, but things are happening. We're classifying our costs, and then we assign those costs to a cost object, like product one and product two. Maybe it's pencils, and we're going to use process costing. Maybe it's picture frames, and we're going to use job costing, but we have to assign these costs to our cost objects, right? So that's what we're doing. No big deal, just costing stuff. Um, 
unit cost is important because it's your inventory, right? We build up the costs by taking direct materials, direct labor and overhead to work in process. That becomes finished goods inventory, which we sell. The costs that are in finished goods inventory become our cost of goods sold. So it's super, super important um, because we have to be able to report cost of goods sold. We have to be able to decide how much to charge for our products, right? And it's the same for non-manufacturers. If you're providing a service and you don't know how much it costs you, how do you know how much to charge your customer? You know, you could be losing money on those services if you don't cost out your overhead. All right. Um, so you need to both measure your costs and then assign them to a product. Um, we use normal costing typically, and normal costing means you're calculating a rate up front and you're applying the overhead as you go. You don't wait till the end of the job and see how much overhead happened and, and add it to the job, right? Or you wait to the end of the year and see how much overhead happened. As you go, you apply the overhead. Then, at the end of the period, if you go, oh, you know what, I was a little bit off, then you, you know, find your variance and you just fix that. You know, add it or subtract it from cost of goods sold, usually. So, we need to measure, we need to assign, we like normal costing. Um, direct materials and direct labor, easy peasy, you track that. You know, you know how many materials went in to make the thing, right? Assuming you're tracking them, which you should be doing if you're doing cost accounting and you know how much labor, you know how many hours your labor worked that's pretty easy the of course the thing that's hard is the overhead so overhead gets applied using a predetermined rate in normal costing and then that tell, lets us know how much that job costs or how much it would cost in case I wanted to put a bid in, in for something all right so when we estimate our overhead rates, right? We say we think we're going to spend about this much on overhead and we're going to um, apply it using uh, some activity uh, like labor hours or machine hours or whatever, right? We're going to apply that rate using some cost driver of some kind and we divide it, right? We say we're going to, we think we'll use 25,000 machine hours this year. Okay, we think we're going to use 50,000 machine hours this year, right? So we're estimating, right? These are all just estimates, right? We estimate the total overhead. We estimate the total driver divided into there and come up with our rate. Well, one thing you have to choose, in addition to estimating your overhead, uh, you have to estimate the activity level for that driver. You know, are we going to make a lot of this product or very few of this product or use a lot of machine hours, use a lot of labor hours? So we have different amounts. We have expected levels. We have the normal, which is what we predict, right? We have the normal level, which is average over a long period of time. We normally use these many machine hours. Theoretical level. We have a machine, if we run three shifts, we could run it this many hours, right? That in theory, maximum. Um, and there's the practical level. So it's the maximum output, but uh, we're running three shifts, but we take breaks between, we allow for repair, you know, it's like, it's, it's the maximum that get could really be realized. You have to pick a level, right? That's the point. So you're, you're typically, you know, gonna pick the level you think is gonna give you the best rate, right? Not the, but by best, I mean the most accurate, right? Because you're trying to estimate your overhead rates and you want it to be right so that you get your cost right. So um, uh, you can see that normal is going to be an average, whereas expected is going to go up and down based on what customers do. Theoretical is going to be your absolute highest rate. It's like we run the machine full on all the time, no breaks. Can't really do that. How much could you really run that machine? That's theoretical. All right. So this chapter is about job order costing. Now that we understand a little bit about the various aspects of costing, let's talk about some specific kind of costing. You might do job order costing if your cost object is something somewhat unique, like a picture frame, 
like a house that you're you're a contractor and you're going to build a custom home. Um, uh, even a not custom home is probably going to use job costing because they just all have little adjustments. Um, so you've got something you want to use job order. So costs are accumulated by the job, right? So you have to be able to track each job, right? So if you make picture frames, you have to be able to track each and every picture frame you make. If you are a builder and you make homes, you have to be able to track the cost for each home you make. So we're going to stop right now and we are going to get into the specifics of job order costing systems, the documents we use, and how that works.